physical comedy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Nick. Uh, my name is Mark Walters. Uh, I run uh, one of the events. I, I can't even talk. Oh, my God, I'm so tired. This is ridiculous. You guys have no idea how hard it is to put these shows on. But I'm glad you guys are here because it's going to be fun from this moment forward. I am the event manager of Fan Days. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope you guys are having a good time and it's about to get a lot better because uh, we're going to kick it off our very first official Q&A of the show. And uh, I can think of nobody better to do it. So now as you, some of you know, we've had this guy here before, but this is one of those guys that like when you find out that he can come back, the, the stupidest thing you could possibly do is say no. So why, you know, why not bring him back? How many of you guys are Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fans? <laughs> Some were a little too 
drunk, I don't drink, but someone. And uh, so lots, lots of bleeping on that one. Um, and then we have, after that, then we have uh, the, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu slash Muay Thai episode for like, you know, Black Belt Television, something like that. And the last episode I'm shooting now is going to go into uh, October with, with uh, I was scared of hot air balloons. You know, I try to get people past their fears. The last two fears I have, well, there's a lot of things, but uh, hot air balloons, I always, as a kid, I just, I don't know, I just couldn't stand hot air balloons. And I always freaked out like a clown, so I was thinking I'd be terrible to be stuck like in a hot air balloon with like clowns. Ah, you know, I like, can't land, can't jump, so I'm going to decide to jump the hot air balloon uh, dressed as a clown. So that's going to be the, to get over the fears. So I'll be jumping that hot air balloon in October. And then um, I filmed. We filmed the last couple of days. Uh, my wife has an injury from skydiving and, and just fighting and tunnels and all that stuff. So her leg really swelled up. So she's been in the hospital the last few days. And I didn't post it because I don't want people like, ah, you know. Uh, she's getting out today, but they drank her leg and all that stuff. So we were filming about the uh, interference of her jumping with me in October a little bit. But I think she should be okay. Uh, it wasn't nothing too major or surgery or anything like that. But uh, she's supposed to be here today. But uh, anyway, that's why she's not. I got Jenna running around somewhere. I don't know where she's at. Alright. Anyway, so we'll start with any questions or you know if I had the answers for you guys. Oh yeah, we're gonna line up at the where? I can't even, this reminds me of like the white light episode. You know, where it was just like, who's it gonna be? It was like oh yeah, baby. Everyone like Sucks. Awesome. It's like, oh, dude, that sucks. <laughs> so you get lined up with the microphone. Right over. Yeah, oh, there's two of them. Great. All right, so we'll just uh, go back and forth, like one line, two line, three, you know, back and forth. All right, we'll start with you first. Oh, start with you. I didn't see you. Blinded. Blinded by the light. <laughs> Dallas with them. It's like, what? 
you know, but uh, little kids are, I'm going to be, grow up to be a power ranger. You're like, okay, buddy, and they really do. It's just weird. <laughs> But no, I had the two questions. Uh, one, uh, how far along is the, the movie, the Great Power Movie? Uh, are you going to bring anybody back? And if you had a fatality between you and Scorpion, <laughs> if you the Ranger, what would it be? Uh, I'll definitely kill Scorpion. I mean, uh, you know, vitality. I don't know. I'd definitely kill him. But uh, as far as the Green Ranger movie, as, as far as where that's at right now, it's like into the development <coughs> stage, but we still have to clear it with Saban. There's a lot of things. but. It's to the point now where, you know, Haim, Saban, and everyone else would be silly not to say, okay, let's do this, you know, because the way I got it lined up, you know, and Bat and Sons involved as well, the way I got it lined up, it's just it's too hard to say no to the deal. And it's, for me, it was never about the money. It's not about, okay, now I want X amount of dollars. It's not. It's just too, too, too hard to pass up, you know, like, even with you guys, for the fans, honestly, I enjoy doing Super Mega Force just to, just to see fans' reactions and stuff, and it only took me a week to film, and you know I could have been sitting at home and doing nothing, which I never do. I'm always on social media or traveling and reaching out to people. I just feel like we got one life, and we got to fill it as best as we can. There's really no downtime. You know, we got 86,400 seconds a day, but who's counting? Uh, and you have to like, you know, value value those seconds and the people that drain you, the people that are drama, the people that just annoy you. Like, you got to get your seconds back because they're just time robbers. They're just stealing your seconds away from you. You know what I mean? So, thank you, Tommy. Thank you, buddy. Okay. Hi. Uh, <laughs> really big fan. A um, long time ago, I think it was earlier this year, that you broke the world record for uh, skydiving and breaking logs in the air. Do you think you're going to end up breaking your own record? Um, you know what? I don't really know, man. Like, that's just something. I just get into fun things. I mean, right now, I moved on to uh, base jumping. I'm jumping a bridge in, uh, in November. It's like a 480 foot bridge, just for fun. Uh, and other stuff, you know, I mean, I got, I got, you know, I'm, I'm continuing training. I want to see some other, you know, the, the way I do is I love to accomplish things, and then there's other goals, you know what I mean? And uh, I just, uh, I just love skydiving. It was one of those things that I never practiced for. It was just, I mean, I, I, I can do 20 easy, no problem. And I probably will when I have the time. It's just, you know, um, I just did it. It was like I didn't have to do it again. I never practiced it. I didn't know how it felt and stuff. But I'm doing a lot of free fly and um, some super, super hard stuff right now. I'm working on working on another world record that I'll, I'll, I'll keep posting on my uh, Facebook page that that will be broken and stuff like that. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Hello. Mine's a little bit different. Um, I'm actually going to wonder how, with all that you do, all the places that you go, with all that time. How do you keep your family together and keep Jenna in school? Yeah, that's that's a hard one. Um, well, she did not go to school. What is today? For today. Um, and just the reason is because her mom's in the hospital and stuff. And we usually balance it out a little bit, but she's a good girl. We get tutoring, and uh, you know, this is really nothing compared to being a kid actor. I, I was never a kid actor. I think people say, "How's it feel when you're a kid actor?" I was. I was 19. I was a man. You know, if you're 18, you're a, you're a man. You need to grow up and realize that you take. A your own responsibility, and it is what it is. When you're 18, you're just a man, and I was a man at that time, taking care of my own stuff. So it's not a hard schedule like these Olsen twins did when they were filming, or uh, even little Blake that filmed Turbo. He was on set, being you know tutored and all. She's a good girl. She's smart. We do a little bit of tutoring, and uh, when we do miss a day, we try to make it up. But most of the time, I do travel alone. I mean, uh, you know, like this 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 week or this month, she'll only be here at Dallas Comic Con, and then I got. New York Comic Con coming up, and I got Wizard World Tennessee, and then I got the Arizona uh, balloon jump. So that that's going to be four weeks, and then I got the next week, which is Canada, the next week Rhode Island, um, and then maybe Argentina. But but other than that, it's very hard. So when I get home, I try to pull the family together for three or four days, and that's what I mean. Like the people that stress you out, is like, I have no time for any of that because I'm there to. I got limits of time with my family and pulling everything together. I'm just, I think on a big cake this year to be drama free and just don't waste time. There's no sense to keep talking to someone 10 times about the same thing. You know what I mean? It's like on a phone call where you gotta be like, oh, that's great. Have you ever heard this noise before? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I forgot who was next over here. You were? Okay. First of all, you're amazing. Thank you. And second of all, What's your favorite tattoo that you have? Uh, my favorite tattoo? 
probably be two things. My brother, his, his name on the back of my arm, which uh, because he, you know he played my brother on, on Zio, David Shukar, and he passed away, so I put that on the back of his arm, uh, back of my arm to remember him. Um, and then obviously I got my wife's name there because she helped me get through my brother's death, and then I got Jenna on the chest there. So I would say those are the, those are the most. And all the other ones is cool artwork. I usually go into a tattoo guy and say, Hey, you got something cool? And he's like, Yeah, I'll make something. Don't worry about it. And I just see it out. And I'm like, Yeah, wow. Or you spelled my name wrong. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're amazing too. <laughs> Such a grown up girl. Right. Yes. Hello, Tommy boy. How are you? Two things. One, how does it feel to literally squeeze back into the suit again? Uh, and that's two, good. okay. And two, wait. <laughs> wait, actually, I'll just wait for you to answer the question. Uh, it was custom made, so I didn't have to squeeze in anything. <laughs> Build it around my body, baby. <laughs> and this one, I don't know if this is too much for this, but can I hear your battle cry? You know, when you do your jump kick? Oh, like a key eye? Yeah, it was a battle cry. Like, I lost! I lost! Why did I lose? Why am I driving toward lose? Why? Kimberly! <laughs> I call it a battle cry, then I call it a key eye. Time of it, but uh, that is the suit. Well, at least the spandex and all the other stuff that I wore on Super Mega Force, because that stuff just secretly disappeared. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but uh, yes, that will be tomorrow. Anyway, just wanted to. I just want to get my time straight here, so I know what's going on today, tomorrow. Today, I think we we have. I have a Q and A. Or uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a Q and A. <laughs> I have a. Uh, after this, I'll be at my table for a little bit, for a little limited time there, and then I got a VIP meet and greet at 6.30. Uh, VIP meet and greets are a little bit different, like 20, 30 people. I'm sure there's a couple spots left, but it's just more of a private. We take pictures and sign and stuff. And I usually did that at bigger cons when I do VIP meet and greets, because sometimes we get overwhelmed with like, you know, I can't get to everyone's questions, and they're like, is there any way we can? I was like, ah, we'll do a private little Q&As. But, and then after that, I'll be back at my table till 8 o'clock. And then tomorrow I don't have a Q&A or anything like that, just the uh, Green Ranger photo op at 1 p.m. And this is just to refresh my memory. And then a VIP tomorrow, of course, is 6.30. Now I'm refreshed. <laughs> Alright, so we have a question over here? Okay. He wants to know, out of all the Power Rangers, which one's your favorite? My favorite? Um, you all can pick any color that I was, because some are like, I'm sorry, man, Zio was my favorite. It's like, why are you saying sorry? It's me. Who cares? You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, you know, girl come up saying, sorry. Oh, whatever. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But, uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, so, but yeah, I would probably say green just because it was the first one. And, uh, but the white one's kind of like rubbing off of me a little bit too. So, it just really all depends. But I would probably say green. And I like all of them. Though. All of them are just different. You know? Different personalities. Because I have like seven or eight of them. <laughs> yes? Hello, Jason. Hi. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to know, uh, you did Turbo the movie, and then you went to the series. I know you left, you guys left. Was it up to you to leave? You guys to leave, or was it Savant? And did you know going into the movie that you guys were leaving? What was up to that? Um, it was my decision to leave, but it wasn't my decision for everyone to get fired. You know what I mean? I went in there trying to... All I went in there for is to try to get, you know have the owner visit the set to meet the actors that they have never met before for one whole entire year. See, when I first started, it was the, you know, eat, go to limo, make your big start. I met Haim and hung out with Haim, Shuki, and then all of a sudden as the show went on, it was less, probably more demand on them to do other business stuff and, and less being around on set. So my simple thing was to go in there, because they were asking, don't worry, I'll get them on set. So I went in there and asked, hey, you need to come to set a little bit more, and ah, you need to come to set. I'll just pay more money, and I said, it's not about the money for me. So you're, you're, you're not going to go to set and visit them and all, I'm just too busy and blah, blah, blah. I'll just throw you money, and I said, okay, I'm out. I mean, I don't need any more money, I'm out. And, uh, and so he said, if I leave, they're going to fire everybody. And so I had a lot of pressure on me, you know what I mean? I wanted to leave while the show was on top. I didn't really like the way the show was going, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, we went an $80 million movie to, to an $8 million movie. And it wasn't nothing like that, it's just we worked six days a week, 
15 hours a day. There was no time for anything at all. And we're talking five, six years straight. So it was just, you know, work, work, work. There was no time to even see anything on TV or, you know what I mean? And uh, stuff like that. So yeah, it was my decision to leave. I don't regret anything. There's a lot of other rangers that regret maybe going on strike and asking for more money. That was never me. I never asked for more money. All I wanted was more pats on the back. Hey, you're doing a good job. I think as I train my staff, that's what they want more than money. They want to work for someone who really appreciates them and tells them every day, you're doing a good job. Just like if someone gives you confidence, your partner or whatever. You know, it stinks when you don't get confidence from your partner. And sorry, men and women, I'm probably opposing you right now. But it's the truth. You know, you want your partner, your man, your man or your woman or husband or wife to, to build you up, not build you down. And it's the same thing for me in all relationships. Okay, the last I just thing. just saw a girl smack a guy. Is that okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and the last thing is, uh, I saw the Dire Rangers in the Super Mega Force uh, trailer. Uh, Gose is the uh, name of the Dire Rangers uh, series. So if you can blink once, if you're bringing back the Dire Rangers Super Mega Force. Mega Force, but the White Ranger is a Dire Ranger, so if you can just blink, confirming that. I don't even really know, man. I would blink. I, I would if I knew. There's a lot of things I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> There's a lot of lines in there that were cut, people that were cut, but as I was reading the script, delete, 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 cut, yeah. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right. Um, first of all, I love your hair. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, second it's so just... funny because you know I cut my own hair I and mean, a lot of people I don't tell anybody but when I got my hair cut from being long I wanted to like go somewhere and you know see where I could get my hair I was really worried about it because I had long hair my whole life and I went to a guy that cut my really long hair and I was like are you any good I was like really concerned about it but he cut my hair and after that day for years and years ago I just cut my own hair and I was complaining about the back, back in the sun we were filming some stuff for you know interviews with the White Ranger and Scorpio <laughs> the way I cut my hair is like, I spike it and then I take scissors and I just, you know, shape it kind of. And uh, it's, you know, the other night it was getting a little out of control, so I just kind of shaped it today a little bit, but I'm going to have to go in there. I, I cut my own hair, but uh, anyway, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Um, and I was just wondering, who is your daughter's favorite Power Ranger? Um, my daughter's favorite? Well, she's going to say me, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just because she don't want to make me feel bad. Uh, she did what she met Johnny and liked Johnny Bosch, and then uh, of course she likes uh, she loves Catherine because Catherine she 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 doesn't know Amy at all, but um, she knows Catherine, and I think that she might not like Kimberly because like I kissed her and stuff, and so she's like a little upset about that. Um, and then me and Catherine never really kissed, so uh, she's you know like you're okay, you know, and I'm, and I'm trying to be my mommy type of thing. So I would say Catherine is probably her favorite. Thank you. Okay. Joey Zabala, your gym master. We know about your martial arts background and all that good stuff. The computer lesson just got it. Could we see you take on Midori Yama on American Ninja Warrior? I'll take it anyone. Yeah. It's just every time I say yes, no one calls me. <laughs> <laughs> CM Punk says yes, he don't call me, man. He don't call me. All the other people don't call me. I even want to spar Anderson Silva for a, for a funding, uh, you know, a, a little foundation for raising money for inner city kids. I had that going on in Brazil. I don't get a call from him. I don't get calls from him. That's terrible. Austin disappeared a long time ago when I mentioned anything about him. Still hiding somewhere. But, uh, okay. Oh, that was kind of my question. I was going to ask if you had any MMA fight scheduled. Or... I, I want to get something big, though. You know what I mean? Like, I want to do a big fight that's going to be seen by a lot of people. You know, I'm tired of the YouTube fights, I'm tired of like, you know, and I know, I'm, look, I've worked my way up, I've had seven fights already, I've worked my way up. The only problem is that the, the promoters, they don't care, so they just care about your all money. If, will you come see Jason at this event? It's like, I don't want to do, I want to do a, an event that can be seen on TV and a good network and uh, like, you know, like a worthy opponent, like someone that you guys can know instead of who's this guy? Someone you can be like, oh yeah, CM Punk, Jason Franklin, fight him. Oh heck yeah, I got to tune this fight in. That's what I'm really looking for. So that's why I'm staying in shape and, you know, tipping the scale at 200 so I can drop to 185 if I have to or go up to 205, somewhere into the middle there. That's why I'm always like, fitness here, fitness here. So, whose turn? Your turn? Yeah. Yes. Um, I got to say, I got into martial arts because of you and because of the Rangers. Um, I've been wanting to get back into it again. Um, um, I wanted to ask you, what is a good martial art that not, not only challenges physically but challenges mentally as well? You know what? I would say uh, all martial arts is good. You know, I'm, not, I'm a firm believer that all martial arts is good. Um, 
you know, I'm a firm believer that all churches are good, but I'm also a firm believer of who develops the message, who tells you the message. Can you relate to that person? Can you understand them? Are you understanding what they're saying? Or are you go to church and fall asleep with someone like, back in an air? You know? Or you're like really into like Joe Olstein or Crypto Dollar that, that you listen, you get motivational stuff beyond biblical principles. And um, I think it's the same thing with karate, is that you have to find an instructor who number one is good. Number two I think who is in shape because don't make me do a thousand push-ups if you can't do a thousand push-ups. Sorry, no offense. Um, and someone that has, a, a, you know, a good attitude. Now, if someone is out of shape as an instructor due to an injury or a lot of hard time training, that's not a problem. But you can't preach fitness here to me if you're not fit. Don't tell me not to eat pancakes when I see you at Waffle House. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't eat pancakes at Waffle House anyway because Waffle House don't have pancakes, so it doesn't really matter. So. But um, I think someone that you just need to, someone that you just need to, uh, to, to connect with, someone that passes the message. Because remember, the messages you're getting from me through karate is passed on from generation to generation. So if the stuff don't work, it's not my fault. It's your fault. Yeah. But it's, it's passed down from generation to generation. Now, what I'm working on is uh, I'm working on a, a, where I can train people online, like le legitimately train people online. You know, offer like some free lessons, and I can have a, I have a program that I can connect to anywhere, anyone around the world. You guys can log on at a certain time and take classes and stuff. There's a lot of people that want to train with me from different states and around the country, so I'm developing this thing that's going to be out there soon. Uh, it's just a matter of you know when and all that stuff. So I know it's a long answer, but um, that's just my feelings on it. You should hear when I'm in a, a room full of high-ranking black belts that own like 2,000 schools and I say the same thing I just said. I have just exit the back door because they all just want to kill me. You know, first, y'all need to be in shape and they're like, you mother, I'm going to smack you. I'll be out the back if y'all need me.